Well, amen. It's good to be in God's house, isn't it? Don't tell anybody but you, that you saw the pastor's skirt blowing up this morning because that sounds terrible. That just sounds awful. We, uh, we spent a lot of money on these stained glass windows. Uh, we had them re-leaded. Uh, we had protective glass put on the outside of those windows. Wouldn't it be awesome to have to call our insurance company and file a claim and say, we had a baptism in our church, and the people yelled so loudly, they blew one of those stained glass windows out, that everybody cheered so loudly like the angels in heaven uh, when a child was baptized. Let's let Holly Springs hear us this morning. Amen? Amen. Let's warm up. Let's have a warm up. Let's hear it. Multiply that by about three times, and you'll have it here. Okay, you're going to look this way. <laughs> Bailey came, and, and listen, when you ask a child or an adult why you are being baptized, and they say, as Bailey said this morning, because I prayed and asked Jesus to come into my heart, and he did so, and he forgave me of my sin. Now, that's the right answer. Isn't that the right answer? <laughs> Bailey, have you accepted Jesus as your Savior? Yes, I do. Bailey Whitehead, upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and in obedience to, my, to the Lord's commands, I baptize you, my little sister, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay, big breath. <laughs> All God's people said, Amen. Amen. Brother Bob, come and lead us, if you would, please. Amen. What a great way to begin the service. We welcome our church family, and now we welcome Bailey Rose into the church family of God as she is baptized into the body of Christ uh, this morning, and we celebrate indeed. We are here to praise and to worship the Lord together, and we invite you now just to stand where you are and join us in singing a great song of praise. In fact, it says, we bring into the house of the Lord a sacrifice of praise from our heart to the Lord. We'll sing it through one time, and then we'll give you a chance this morning just to have a little time of fellowship, turn around, greet somebody in the name of the Lord, tell them you love them, give them a hug, handshake, whatever you're comfortable with, and uh, we'll have a great time of fellowship in the house of the Lord this morning. Let's sing, We Bring the Sacrifice. sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifice Sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifice. Oh, 
this morning. Give the Lord a praise offering. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to remain standing for a prayer, and Brother Sean is going to lead us this morning. Good morning, church. Let's pray today and just consecrate this service to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you, Lord, for another day to just come into your house, Father, to worship you, Lord. We just praise you for this beautiful day that you've set before us, God. We just pray that as we seek to turn our hearts toward you this morning, Father, that you would just sweep in here with your mighty presence, Father, and that you would just pour out your spirit on us today, Father. We pray that you would continue to be with this worship service, Father, that it would just be a joy to your ears, Father. We just pray that you would be with Brother Joe, Lord, this morning as he leads us in the word, God. We just love you and we praise you, Father. Continue to guide us out of here today, Father. Continue to direct our paths this week, Lord. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. You may be seated. And while Brother Joe is coming, getting his Sunday clothes on, we're going to uh, just welcome you once again to our service this morning and also those who are viewing by way of Facebook, our, our, our separate congregation out there somewhere. We invite all of you to our time of worship this morning, First Baptist Holly Springs. We have a beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, to be out and we praise the Lord for the sunshine spring is around the corner and believe it or not next Sunday is March and then Easter is the last Sunday in March so uh, we've got some exciting uh, days and weeks ahead as we celebrate uh, as a church family these special times of year so uh, I hope you are welcome and feeling at home in the house of the Lord we had a great time of fellowship this morning that was wonderful to see and to behold and so now we're going to continue our time of worship and praise. We said this morning we bring the sacrifice of praise to the house, so we want to continue to praise him with all of our hearts this morning. So we sing hymns and, and uh, songs of, of praise and worship. Okay, are you ready? Great old hymn to begin with. Let's stand and we'll sing praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed redeemer. Thank you. 
say bye-bye to our ends and say hello to our quartet, mixed quartet, ladies and gentlemen, who are going to sing a wonderful song, really of assurance, that says, yes, I know that Jesus has saved me.
what, what can wash away my sin? Sometimes you meet people and they say, but preacher, you just don't know what I've done in my life or how I've lived my life. Uh, I don't think I can ever forgive myself. I'm in that same boat, by the way. I have said and done things in my life that uh, I know God has forgiven me. I know my loved ones have forgiven me but I have a hard time forgiving myself and uh, I feel the guilt and then I'm reminded that the guilt comes from Satan because uh, the blood of Jesus takes our sin away uh, and completely, totally, no matter where you are in your life, no matter who you are in your life, uh, God loves you and God can forgive you. You're watching on Facebook this morning. Uh, God loves you. And he stands ready to forgive you. You do like Bailey Rose testified before she was baptized. I prayed and asked Jesus to come into my heart and my life. And he did. And he forgave me of my sins. Amen. Amen. Uh, I asked her if I could preach that sometime. And she said yes. And so <laughs> that's good stuff. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your love. And God, we just pray. That during these moments, Lord, you might clear our hearts and our minds. We might be able to focus on you. We might be able to concentrate not only our thoughts, but our, the meditation of our hearts, Father, might be upon your word today. Uh, Father, as we think about what the world needs more of, and that's kindness, thank you, Father God, for loving us. And Lord, as we're going to share, thank you for the greatest act of kindness in history, and that is the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for forgiving us. We pray in Jesus' name for his sake, and all the people in the house of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. Take your Bible if you would. We're going to two different places again this morning. We're going back to Galatians chapter 5. But we're also going to look in Ephesians chapter 4. That's easy because it's right next, they're right next door to each other, aren't they? So that's easy to find. And last Sunday, we talked about uh, the fruit of the Spirit, which is patience. We all need more of that, don't we? Can I get an amen from my wife? We all, <laughs> she just looks at me. Have you noticed that wives just have to look at you? There's nonverbal communication, and sometimes that's the clearest and most, most frightening. And, you know, but uh, We all need supernatural patience, don't we, uh, in, in our lives, and the Holy Spirit gives that. And last week we looked at the life of King Solomon in the Old Testament. Uh, we shared about that occasion when he grew impatient, and remember he offered the sacrifice instead of waiting for the prophet Samuel. And uh, we looked at that pas passage in 1 Samuel 13. Uh, I thought it was in 1 Kings, and you all had to remind me. Remember last Sunday uh, that it was in 1 Samuel. And we looked at the overall life of Saul, and you saw that uh, Saul's lack of patience was evidence of other serious life issues he had. He wanted to kill David, didn't he? He was an attempted murderer. He was going to actually become a murderer because he was going to kill uh, prophets and priests later. Uh, Saul let circumstances control his behavior. When you lose your patient, patience, you're not in control. And then we said, remember, that Saul measured time. God doesn't. And that's hard for us to comprehend, isn't it? God measures time. God doesn't. It's like the old pastor said, I lose my patience because I'm in a hurry and God isn't. And that suits our lives for many of us. We're not on time, God's time frame because God doesn't measure time. And this morning, we're going to think about that fruit of the Spirit that is kindness. 
And I'm sure that we all, everybody in this room, if we took turns, could say, I have a story where somebody was kind to me, did an act of kindness. Let me buckle my pant belt here. Still getting over the baptism. My dad went to be with the Lord in 2009. And it's hard when you're not close by. Now, we were in Greenfield, Tennessee, which is not that far. But it was like 150 miles to Chipolo. Come straight down Highway 45 from Greenfield to Chipolo. And so we, I ran up and down that highway a lot when my dad was sick and in the hospital. And I went one Sunday right after church. Right after church was over Sunday morning, I jumped in my little imitation car that I used to drive. I had that when I first came here, that little Toyota uh, that was a tiny little car, and I raced to the hospital in Chipolo. And it was pretty obvious my dad was about to go to be with the Lord. And so I stayed Sunday, Sunday night, Monday, Monday night, Tuesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon. The church in Greenfield had been so gracious to me and so kind to me to let me be away but I just felt like I, I need to get back for prayer meeting tonight. I miss so much. So I left my, my mom and my brother were in the hospital with my dad, and I drove back to Greenfield. Right before a prayer meeting started, my phone rang. And I knew exactly what it was. And it was my brother saying, Dad's, gone home to be with the Lord. He celebrated his home going, as we say here. And my mom was at the hospital by herself with my older brother, and he wasn't a whole lot of help to her. And there was a nurse, nurses, health care professionals. There was a nurse there that looked at my 90-pound mom, my 81-year-old mother, who was five feet tall every every bit of five feet tall. And uh, she said, I'm going to get off work here, but she said, I'm going to stay with you. Now, I don't know what time that nurse got off work. Whatever time that first shift ended and the night shift was coming on, three, four, five, six o'clock, it was about nine o'clock before the funeral home people came to take my dad's body away. And that lady stayed with my mom until they got there. She didn't have to do that. She just saw this now widowed lady and had compassion on her. And it was an act of kindness that my mom never forgot and an act of kindness that I will never forget, uh, an act of sacrifice that was a blessing to our family. You all have a testimony like that, I'm sure. Everybody does. Uh, this morning we're looking back in Galatians chapter 5 and then we're going to look in Ephesians chapter 4 and we're learning about kindness, that kindness that's supernatural, that comes from God, that is a fruit of the Spirit. And again, let's start there in Galatians chapter 5 in verse 22. Paul writes, but the fruit of the Spirit is Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. There's no limit. There, it's limitless. <laughs> uh, there's no laws prohib prohibiting any of those. And they're limitless practices for us. And then over in Ephesians chapter 4, you're going to have to keep both these places marked. I'm sorry, but you're just going to work at it. Paul writes to the church in Ephesus, and he says in verse 31 of Ephesians 4, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as in Christ God forgave you. Just like patience is a gift, 
and a practice. All of these fruits of the Spirit are supernatural. They come from God, but they're also things that we have to put into practice, aren't they? And so we have to put into practice the acts of kindness that we can do. We, that's up to us whether we activate the fruits of the Spirit. So there are things that we've talked during this series about things that we can do that hinder the fruits of the Spirit and things that we can do that help to activate the fruit of the Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. Uh, and uh, we've done that. We said that uh, these gifts kind of build upon each other. If you have love, you'll have joy. If you have joy, you'll have love and joy, you'll have peace. If you have love, joy, and peace, you'll be patient. If you have love, joy, peace, and patient, you'll be kind. And so this morning, what facilitates and what hinders kindness? Kindness requires kind thoughts. Go back to Ephesians chapter 4 in verse 31. Paul says, get rid of all bitterness and rage and anger and brawling and slander along with every form of malice. Uh, if those are the things that are in your heart, you won't be kind. Uh, if those are the things that, are, are, that make up your thought life, you're not going to be kind, are you? Uh, that, that bitterness and that anger, sometimes it creeps into our lives. The Greek word for kindness in Galatians 5 is the word Christotes, and it can be translated as mercy or merciful. Kindness often involves having mercy on somebody, doesn't it? You see somebody that's hurting, and you have mercy on them. And when Paul wrote to the church at Galatia, it was primary, primarily filled with Jewish believers. And legalism was in the church. Remember studying about legalism in, in small groups in Sunday school? Legalism was where the Jewish believers were telling everyone, listen, in order to become a Christian, you first have to become a Jew. You have to ad adhere to the principles of Judaism. And Paul combated that everywhere he went. And this disagreement caused some infighting among God's people. Look there in verse 14 of Galatians chapter 5. Did you keep your Bible open? Galatians chapter 5 verse 14 says, The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Remember uh, the uh, lawyer you know, uh, asked Jesus, What's the first and greatest commandment? And he says, Love the Lord supreme, supremely. And then love your neighbor as yourself. And then in verse 15, if you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. And these were Christians. <laughs> they were fighting each other. They were backbiting. They were spiritually seeking to destroy each other. And over in Ephesians, Paul's not addressing a specific church. Those of you who come on Wednesday night, and uh, join us on Wednesday night. And uh, I had a tenderloin sandwich last night, Tyler, from Wednesday night. It was better even than it was Wednesday. It was good Wednesday. You're missing out if you don't come to supper. <laughs> and uh, the ladies, Wednesday night Bible study in our prayer meeting. Uh, this letter, we've been studying about Ephesus in prayer meeting. And this letter that we read in uh, the text in chapter 4, it was a circular letter. It was written to a church, but they circulated the letter to other churches for them to read. And so there weren't as, as many specific issues addressed by Paul to the church at Ephesus because it was meant to be read among other churches. But in verse 32 of Ephesians chapter 4 that we just read a moment ago, Paul says, be kind and compassionate to one another, again, to Christians. And Paul uses the same Greek word here, Christotes, as he used in Galatians 5. Now, I like what Jesus said in Matthew 12. Do we have Matthew 12, 35? I'll, this is in the contemporary English version. It says, good people bring good things out of their good hearts or out of their hearts, but evil people bring evil things out of their hearts. That makes sense, doesn't it? If you... 
put garbage into your mind and your heart, garbage is what you get in your life. If you replace those things with kindness, if, if you look at your life and say there's bitterness and rage and anger and brawling and slander and malice, if you get rid of those things, kindness is going to be the result. Last week we said, didn't we, we said that Saul's impatience was an indication of other issues that he had in his life. Usually if you see an impatient person, what? They've got, they've got other issues. Uh, their, their, their souls are troubled. That's why they're impatient. Remember we said it's like an iceberg. Uh, you see the tip of the iceberg sticking out of the water, but below, usually a lot of times it's bigger. And that's, that's what impatience indicates for us. Uh, there's something else that's gnawing at you or worrisome to you or, or maybe even a sin issue that's there that's causing you to be uh, impatient. And, but if you get rid of those things, kindness would be a result. This, uh, that, that truth that kindness requires kind thoughts is the first cousin of that truth from last Sunday. <laughs> that Saul's lack of patience was evidence of his other life issues. That's the first cousin to that truth. Uh, and let me show you, a, is there a slide of these three characters? Do you remember this story? I don't know if anybody remembers this story. Back in 2017, the lady on the lot right there is Kate McClure, and the bearded guy on the left there is Johnny Bobbitt Jr. And you may remember, you remember this story? Here's, here's what happened. This lady and the guy with the beard, Mr. Bearded Guy over there on the left, uh, she said, I ran out of gas. And this kind-hearted man is a homeless vet. And when he saw that I was out of gas, he pushed my car to the gas station. He gave me the last $20 that he had so I could put some gas in my car so I could make it home. And everybody, they posted this picture. That's the, the, the girl's boyfriend in the middle, uh, and his name is uh, D'Amico, Mark D'Amico. And he rushed down to the gas station and took the picture. They put this story out, and let me tell you what, people were so touched by this that the boyfriend and the girlfriend started a GoFundMe page for this homeless vet. And they raised over $400,000 for this homeless vet. And they, the couple went to the casino. They took vacations, uh, they bought, uh, uh, I think they said they bought a BMW. Ooh, that's what I'd buy. But anyway, that's not, I wouldn't steal to get it. But I, And it was, guess what, everybody ready? Do you remember this? The whole thing was a lie. The, the homeless vet was a homeless vet, but he was in on it too. And here's what happened. Don't you just love dumb criminals? All criminals are dumb, but I mean some are dumber than the others. The law found out about it because the homeless vet sued the other two saying, I didn't get my share. I didn't get my cut. He filed a lawsuit saying, I didn't get my cut of this. They were charged with second-degree conspiracy and theft by deception, and the couple got prison sentences. The homeless guy got put on probation. Three evil people with evil thoughts. 14,347 people with kind thoughts were taken advantage of. But that's okay. And you're going to find that some people don't like to do things kind for, don't want to do kind acts for others because they say somebody's going to take advantage of me. They will, won't they? But we can't answer for them, but we have to answer for who? We have to answer for ourselves. Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I like the New Living Translation. It says, so faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. We need to fill our minds with, and our hearts with 
the Lord Jesus Christ. And kindness will come forth from that. There was, there is a place, a foundation called the Random Act of Acts of Kindness Foundation. It just encourages people to be kind to one another. It's it's hard to imagine we have to be reminded, and and even Christian people uh, have to be reminded of that, uh, not to be outdone. Uh, a lady wrote a book that called is called Radical Acts of Kindness, and that lady, by the way, created Blue's Clues. And Daniel, the Tiger's Neighborhood. How many of you know what I'm talking about? No Blue's Clues and Daniel's. Okay, Daniel, is that it? Daniel, the time. Uh, if you've got grandkids or kids, you know about those. Let me tell can I tell off on somebody this morning? Milton said it's okay. So if, me, if Milton and I are in agreement, that's a scary thing, isn't it? But, let me, can I tell off in one of our small groups, the wings class. Raise your hand if you're in the wings Sunday school class. That's Betty Fitch and Gene Gibson's class. Raise your hand. Some of you are afraid to admit it. Okay, Ray. All right, Ray. Okay. Yeah, Marilyn's not here. Let me, could I have a couple of pictures of what they're up to down there? The wings Sunday school class has been making backpacks for school kids. And I think they had so many of them, they had some left over. They've been collecting clothes for infants and toddlers. They're just practicing what they're learning. It just comes natural, doesn't it? Uh, that act of kindness when you, uh, you have those kind thoughts that you learn about in Sunday school and church, and then you, you go out and you do those things. And let me tell you what, folks, those kind of things speak a louder, better sermon than I can ever preach when we do things like that. Kindness requires kind thoughts, and it requires being sensitive to the needs of others. A kind person looks for needs. He doesn't avoid them. It's no wonder Paul listed kindness and compassion together in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. The Living Bible says, instead be kind to each other, tenderhearted. I think the King James says that too, doesn't it? It says tender-hearted. How many of you know a tender-hearted Christian? How many of you know a cold-hearted Christian? Tender-hearted. I think the best illustration, it comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus was the master educator. He used... Uh, he used words to teach. He used illustrations to teach. He involved his students. He asked them questions. All those things that these people that write these books on education say, I have this wonderful insight. Jesus had them 2,000 years ago. Uh, and uh, he told the parable to, the again, the aforementioned mentioned earlier. Remember the lawyer went up to Jesus and ask him some questions to kind of trap him. Have you ever been asked questions by an attorney that were meant to kind of trap you in what you were saying? Thankfully, I haven't. <laughs> and uh, again, if you're an attorney and you're watching this or you're here, well, let's move on. Let's not, let's not go down something else. Sometimes a lot of good attorneys. Uh, the parable of... The Good Samaritan. Everybody know that. The lawyer asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? And Jesus taught by a parable. Remember what we said a parable was. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And he said there was a man that was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho. Remember we said when you're going to Jerusalem, you're always going up because it's about 2,700 feet above sea level. And when you're leaving Jerusalem, you're always going down. And the image is there, by the way. Also, I'm working on another sermon. But Jerusalem represented the holy city. And uh, the Jericho was an unholy place. 
And so the imagery is also sort of there. It kind of represents us. We start off created in the image of God, and we've done what? We've traveled down. And God, Jesus, is the good Samaritan. He rescues us. But that's another sermon. Remember, two religious leaders walked by. And they passed him by. It says one stopped and looked at him and said, maybe uh, the Levite looked at him and said, well, you know, you should have known better. This road is dangerous. It's going around the side of the kind of the mountain. There are a lot of uh, places for bandits to hide, and it's a dangerous place. And so you're getting what you deserve. Sorry, but sorry, not sorry, and kept on walking. And remember, it was the Samaritan that stopped and helped this man. Uh, the Bible says that uh, when these muggers jumped out on him, they stripped him of his clothes and, and beat him. We would say they beat him half to death. I don't believe there's probably, we have some health care workers here. We have a first responder up there uh, in law enforcement, some law enforcement people in here. They're probably, I don't know how many are here and watching on Facebook, probably not a half dozen or ten or less people that have ever seen somebody beaten to within an inch of their life or injured to the point that they are at near death. To walk up on somebody that is, is naked laying on the side of the road, his teeth are knocked out, his eyes are shut, He's bleeding out of his nose and his mouth and maybe his ears. That was violence. This isn't violence. Do I have another picture? That's not real violence. I have to tell Larry. Larry, wrestling's not real, okay? And so Jerry Lawler and all that, it's not. This man was filthy, bloody, a horrible-looking Spectacle laying there on the side of the road, and it cost that Samaritan something to help him. It cost him something to help. We're willing to help a lot of times, just as long as it doesn't cost us anything. That tender hearted Christian that's sensitive, this man, he was sensitive to a dying man's needs instead of that cold, callous, uncaring heart of those two religious leaders. Uh, kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness. If you have that, if you have those gifts of the Spirit, you're not going to be able to pass somebody by without helping them. Now, we can't help people so often today the way we want to because sometimes it's dangerous, isn't it? You know, you hear where somebody stopped and picked up someone on the side of the road and then it was a bad outcome. You know, sometimes you can't, you can't help people. I was uh, in the office uh, by myself late one afternoon, and somebody came up, and uh, it was on a Tuesday. It was right before the folks were coming to play pickleball. Uh, some of them were here, and, and uh, he knocked on the door, and I went, and I, I said, let me get you need some food, and he was incoherent. And I said, well, Stay here, I stay outside, and I'll get you some food. And he said, I, I, I'm going to come in. I said, no, you stay right here. And then he pushed me. He put his hands against my chest and pushed me. And he said, I'm coming in. Now, if you can believe it, this guy wasn't as big as I am. That's pretty small, isn't it? Pretty, pretty, you know. And so uh, I, it, it's hard to help people sometime because it can be dangerous. But as much as is within us, we don't need to pe pass people by that are hurting. And that guy left there and bless his heart, whoever he is, wherever he is, they never knew out where he was. And we see a lot of that when people come by. Uh, some people will take advantage of you. Don't let it stop you being nice to people. When Patty and I first started in ministry, I saw some old pastors. I've told you all before, there aren't as many old pastors around anymore. I don't know. I think they moved on. 
they moved on all right. They've gone on to be with heaven, and I've joined their ranks now. I'm an old pastor. And we saw some old pastors that had been in ministry a long time, and watch this. They were cynical. I saw their attitude that they weren't very loving. And it was because they were scarred. They had been in ministry and they'd had some bad things happen to them. And it had scarred them. But Patty and I vowed, and she rem when we were young, we always said, we will get out of ministry before we become one of them. We'll, we'll, we'll get out of ministry before we become that. You've heard that expression, hurt people hurt people. Hurt people will hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. Have you ever seen anything like this before? You see that guy's hand? Isn't that lovely? Right for lunch. Isn't that nice to look at that? It's called what? Scar. Scar tissue, isn't it? Uh, is I looked it up. Webster's defined scar tissue as the connective tissue forming a scar and composed chiefly of, chiefly of fibroblasts and recent scars and largely of dense collagenous fibers and old scars. Maybe you have a scar like this. It's not sensitive, is it? The skin around it, the area around it is not very sensitive. And a lot of people have that spiritually. But that's no excuse. That's no excuse to say because I've been hurt, I'm going to dish it out to somebody else. And kindness requires kind thoughts and it requires being sensitive to the needs of others and it requires being reminded of God's kindness. The greatest act of kindness in history was what? The cross. I've had some... I've been blessed because I've been around wonderful, caring, nice people in my life and in ministry. Nothing compares to what Jesus did for me. Nothing compares to what Jesus did. And I've had some people that have said, we want to do something nice for you. We want to be a blessing for you uh, and your family. Uh, nothing compares to what Jesus did for me on the cross. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. I like the message here. It says in Christ, I like this. In Christ, God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong so that we could be put right with God. Don't you love that? That's the greatest act of kindness ever. Have you experienced the ultimate act of kindness in your life? An anthropology student asked a lady that was teaching their class that was an expert anthropologist, and he said, what is the first sign that you look for in an archaeological dig that there, the people that lived in that village or that area uh, were upstanding people where there was civilization. And he said, do you, find, do you look like for pots uh, and, you know, uh, uh, gourds and things where they cook their food? Or do you look for like fish hooks or arrowheads? because they were civilized enough to hunt and fish. What do you look for that would show you that an indigenous people that lived in that area were civilized? And he was stunned by what this lady said. She said, among that, when I am, I'm at a dig like that and we find skeletal remains, I look for healed bones. And she said this. She said, healed bones indicate that somebody took care of that person when they got injured. 
They went out and went hunting for that person. They went out and went fishing for that person. They cared for that person long enough for that bone to heal. And she said this, compassion is the evidence of civilization. Compassion is the evidence of where people were civilized. People look at First Baptist Church and say kindness is the evidence. Would they look in your heart and your life and say kindness is evident in that person's heart and that person's life? It's a fruit of the Spirit, but we have to put it into practice, don't we? Let's stand together. Father, I thank you so much for your love. Thank you, Father God, for being so kind to me, not only for my salvation, for sending Jesus to die on the cross that I could be saved, but, Father God, for blessing me with a, a, a wonderful, loving spouse and three great kids and four precious little granddaughters. And now, Father God, as I'm so blessed, and even if I wasn't blessed, God, May I return the kindness shown to me to others, the kindness that you showed to me and you show to me every day. Father God, may I return that blessing to others. Father, I pray for each person here today and people that are watching on Facebook, if there's one, maybe there's one, maybe there's several that need to come to know Jesus as their Savior. Father, fill this place with your Holy Spirit. Fill these people's hearts with your Holy Spirit today. Father God, may we respond as you speak to us by giving of ourselves a living sacrifice, holy, which is our reasonable service, God. May we come to Jesus today. Father, I pray that people would make decisions for you right now that they'll be so glad they made someday when they stand before you in eternity. Father, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to sing an invitation now. Yeah. Without him. Without him. If God has spoken to your heart, would you come as we sing? In these years that I've served here as pastor, I, I've said this before, and I feel led to say it again this morning. If I have said or done anything to you to hurt you, I'm sorry. I, if I have acted in a way that was hurtful toward you and your family, I'm sorry. And it grieves me to this day to... You know, that old thing, if you could do like back to the future and get in the time machine and go back and do things over again. But we can't, can we? But moving forward, that's my heart today, uh, except for the gospel. Now, if you're offended by the gospel, you have to take that up with the Lord. Uh, but beyond that, I, have you ever heard that expression, he's his own worst enemy? I think that describes me so oftentimes. 
So God bless you and your family. Make a note of all the announcements that are in the bulletin. Take part. We're having such a wonderful time on Wednesday nights and be a part of all that God is doing here on Wednesday night. Uh, also, uh, David and Linda Henshaw, do you pray for them today? We're going to check on David was very ill when he left this morning. Had, you know, David has health issues, and so he and Linda and Boo were getting ready to leave, and he had to stop and uh, kind of collect himself. So we want to pray for David Henshaw today. Brother, lead us in a song. All right. We began this morning by singing, We Bring the Sacrifice of Praise, and we'll close out by singing, Lord, we praise you. Let my life praise you. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.